Can I edit my DS-160 form if I've already submitted it? What is the latest way in which the DS-160 form number can be updated? Will I lose my appointment if I fill a new form? I know a lot of you have such questions. So this video is going to be your updated guide to the DS-160 form. We have put together 10 of the most frequently asked questions with their solution. And do remember that the DS-160 form is what the visa officer is going to look at when you go for the interview. In fact, even before he talks to you, he is going to be looking at the form. So this is the most important part of your US visa journey. Let's get started. Hi guys, my name is Shachi and I'm a travel and a visa coach. On this channel, you will find lots of useful videos on the US visa process. In fact, we have separate playlists for each of the visa categories. So make sure to check it out. In the description box below, you will also find resources which are going to help you in filling, reviewing, double checking and verifying your DS-160 form. So once you're done watching the video, do check out those resources as well. So let's start with the most frequently asked question about the DS-160 form. And I think you guessed it. How do I update my DS-160 form? Which is also asked as how do I edit my DS-160 form once I have submitted it? Well, to answer this, the first thing that you need to check is your biometric date. Has your biometric date passed? That means, have you completed your biometric? If the answer is yes, then you cannot update or edit the DS-160 form. All the details have already been permanently registered in the system. And the only thing you could do is to be aware of what were the mistakes or what were the fields that was lacking in the DS-160 form and make sure that you are more proactive about it when you go for the interview. However, if your biometric date has not passed, then you have all the flexibility with respect to the DS-160 form. And this is also the reason why we repeatedly ask people to start early. Don't wait till the last minute for your preparation because before biometric, you have so much more flexibility in modifying, correcting, reviewing your application. So coming back to the point, if your biometric date has not passed, then all you need to do is to fill a new form, submit that, so you get a new confirmation page, and then you take the old and the new confirmation page with you for the biometric and ask them to update the new number. It's a very simple process and it hardly takes about 10 minutes extra and it's done at all biometric centers in India without any questions asked. So it's really simple, you just have to fill a new form, submit it, make sure you have the old and the new confirmation page and get it updated in biometric. Now, when it comes to filling a new form, again, there are two ways in which you could do it. First is to retrieve the old form. Let's say that for the old DS-160 form, you know the security question, the uh, date of birth and the surname, and of course, you know the confirmation number. You could just input these details and retrieve the old form. When you retrieve the old form, the advantage is that a lot of fields are already filled. So you don't have to fill you know, the form from scratch and you can just edit and make the changes that you wanted to, submit the form, get a new confirmation page and go ahead with the process. However, let's say that you don't remember the security question or you, know, you just have no idea of what the form was, then you just start from scratch, fill a new form as if you would you know, fill a completely new form, complete it, submit it, get the confirmation page and go ahead. So in essence, summarizing it, if your biometric is not done, then you can basically fill a new DS-160 form, take the old and the new confirmation page with you to the biometric center and get your form updated there. Sometimes we are also asked, is it possible to update the DS-160 form on the portal itself? Well, the answer is no. The portal does not allow you any flexibility to update the DS-160 form. It has to be done at the biometric center. The second FAQ, and this is a tricky one, and this is also something which we are asked very frequently, what do I do if I don't have the old confirmation page? Or what do I do if my original DS-160 form, which I used to book the appointment, has expired? Well, honestly, this is a tricky situation to be in because if you do not have the old confirmation page or rather the original DS-160 confirmation page, which was used to book the appointment, the appointment will not be valid. Yes, that's right, the appointment is not valid. Only if you have the old confirmation page, they are going to let you complete the biometric and go for the interview. So if you are in this situation, the only thing to do is to cancel the existing appointment and restart the entire process. That means you cancel the existing appointment, fill a new DS-160 form, make sure that the form has not expired and use that to book your appointment. And the good thing in this is that you don't have to pay the visa fee again. So the visa fee which is paid remains valid and you could use the same fee to again book your new appointment. And you could also take care next time to ensure that the DS-160 form does not expire. And to do this, make sure that you remember the security question, 
the surname and the date of birth that was used and start the form like even if you enter just one or two fields still it counts just make sure that you've started the form so that the form is properly registered in the system and it doesn't just randomly expire the third faq is will my appointment change or my appointment get cancelled in case i update the ds160 form or fill a new form well the answer is no absolutely not your appointment remains valid in fact the ds160 form and the visa portal for booking the appointment are two very different portals so even if you edit the existing form fill a new form nothing happens to your appointment so you need not worry about that at all your appointment is completely safe the fourth faq do i need to pay the visa fee again uh, if i change or edit my ds160 form well the answer is no you do not have to pay the visa fee again the visa fee is basically for the appointment that you have booked it is not for the form in fact there is no fee for filling the ds160 form you could fill n number of forms it's completely free so the fee that you have paid is for the visa appointment and that is paid only once so even if you fill a new ds160 form edit it or update the ds160 form you do not have to pay the visa fee again so if you're still here still watching the video do give this a thumbs up and comment ds160 form below so comment ds160 form so that i know that you are watching this video and if you have any questions any follow up questions to the faqs that we are discussing please feel free to put it in the comment section below the next question and this is also something that we get asked very very frequently can the visa officer see my old form if i fill a new form so a lot of people have this doubt that if i make changes in this form if i edit it will the visa officer see the old form and question me why did you do this well now honestly this is a little bit of a gray area and i would say that the answer is both yes and no and let me explain why well technically yes if the visa officer goes into the system searches by your name your passport number he does have the option to pull out all details about you however does this practically happen well the answer is no the reason is that when you get your form updated in the biometric that means when you go to the biometric and tell them that hey i have filled a new form they're going to link that form to your profile which means that when the visa officer opens up your profile he is able to see the new ds160 form so it would take the visa officer the extra effort to actually go into the back end pull out all the forms that were filled by you and that i would say happens very 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 rarely there is no real reason for them to do that however do keep in mind that all the previous forms that are attached to the interviews so let's say that you gave the interview earlier those previous forms are there with them very very clearly and many times they compare the current ds160 form to the form that you submitted for your previous interview so if you have filled forms in between and got it updated i would say don't worry too much about it but every form that was used for the interview that yes they have complete access to it and you need to be aware of what you filled in those previous forms the next one is a really important question and i think i have lost track of the number but somewhere around 5th or 6th faq is this that what is the expiry date which comes on top of the form so what is this random date which keeps displaying when you are filling the form and do i need to worry about it and do i need to submit the form before that date well so that random date is a system generated date which is roughly 30 days from the day you started the form so let's say that today is 1st october and you started the form you will see the date somewhere around 30th or 31st of october so this is a system generated date and that remains constant throughout that means even when the days go the date is not updating that that doesn't mean that your form is going to expire on that particular date or you need to submit the form before that date actually the ds160 form expiry is linked to how you log into the form so every time you log into the form the form life extends by 30 days so you just need to make sure that you are actively logging into the form keeping it active and don't really have to worry anything about the date which displays on top of the form and related to this is our next question what is the funda of the 30 days rule about the ds160 form do i need to submit the form within 30 days well this is the same as the previous question you do not need to submit the form within 30 days what you need to do is to make sure that you keep the form active and does not and do not let it expire now how do i keep it active well you need to log into the form that means you need to enter your uh, ds160 id your security question your date of birth your surname and at least move two to three tabs within the form so this is how you keep the form active and you need to do that once at least once a week i would say so if you are doing this regularly the form remains active because every time you log in the life of the form extends by 30 days so every login of yours is giving your form 30 more days and by making sure that you're doing it the form remains active but 
I would say that once you are sure of the form and you are ready to submit it and you know that there are no other changes which are going to be done, I would say go ahead and submit it. Do not unnecessarily wait till the interview day to submit the form because with an online application, there's always that random chance that something could go wrong. So once you're sure of the details, just go ahead, get it reviewed, submit your form and save the confirmation page. The next FAQ is, do children need a DS-160 form or do my dependents need a DS-160 form? Well, the answer is a yes. Every visa applicant needs their own DS-160 form, even if they're children, even if they're just babies. So the DS-160 form has to be individual for every person who is applying for a US visa. So whether it's your spouse, your children, you need to fill a separate DS-160 form for them. The next question, and I think this is our second last FAQ is, can the location mentioned in my DS-160 form and my actual interview location be different? Well, yes, completely. So a DS-160 form is filled in advance. That means when you're filling the form, you don't know where the interview is going to be. So you will fill a tentative location. Most likely you will select the location which is closer to you. Okay. We're just gonna let the chopper pass. That's London for you. There is a plane or a chopper literally every two minutes. I'm not kidding. I don't know where they're all going. And there are also like four different airports here. So I guess the air traffic um, is just through the roof. So no matter which location you are in London, every two minutes, literally, there'll be something passing in the sky. So as I was saying, the location of the interview and the location on your form can be different because the DS-160 form is filled in advance. So when you fill the form, you don't know what the actual location is going to be. And most likely you will select the embassy which is closest to you. So uh, whether it is Delhi, Chennai, Hyderabad, Mumbai or Kolkata, your actual interview location could be different. So you don't have to worry much about it. And also once you know the interview and let's say that the location is different, you don't need to go back and update it or change it in the DS-160 form. And the last question, the last FAQ that we have is, I noticed some minor errors in the DS-160 form. Do I change it or do I just ignore it? Well, I would say that just check where exactly is this error. If the error is in the work education section, in the travel section, in the US contact section, or in your passport or in your name, then definitely do not ignore these errors even if you feel they're minor because these five are the most critical parts of the form. So in such cases, I would still suggest that if your biometric is not done, go ahead, fill a new form, get it updated. But if these errors are in other things, let's say that a small error is there in the address or the error is there in terms of some minor spelling errors and if you feel that it's a very minor error and and it's just one such error in the form then I think it's okay for such minor errors it can be ignored and you can just go ahead with the old confirmation page so these were the frequently asked questions about the DS-160 form other than these 10 FAQs if you have any more questions please feel free to put it in the comment section below we will get back to you we are happy to answer all your questions and do check out the description box we have resources to help you in your DS-160 form so we can help you in filling the form, reviewing it or making any other changes that you feel is necessary. And you can work one-to-one -one with me for doing this. We also have a DS-160 toolkit and we have a toolkit for F1 visa, a toolkit for B1, B2 visa. So these toolkits will help you fill the form on your own. So it'll take about an hour. You can watch the toolkit and simultaneously fill and complete your DS-160 form. So all the good stuff is right below in the description box. Do check out. And we are also including a free PDF with this video. So this free PDF is going to list all the FAQs that we just discussed with the solution. So do download and make use of that as well. Signing off for now. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.